Alabama fans and college football fans around the world. As someone from the state of West Virginia, a West Virginia native born and raised here and a fan of West Virginia University, you're welcome for Nick Saban. What am I talking about? Stick around and I'll explain it right after this word from my sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or come in today to the home of friends and family pricing only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. What is up, college sports fans, Big 12 fans, and fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into another edition of Kuzo's Corner. Belly yourself up to the bar and let me pour you out this shot of top-shelf college football content. On tap today at Kuzo's Corner, we're talking about the GOAT. We're talking about Nick Saban. We're talking about his legacy. But I didn't want to do the same video every other content creator is doing. And since I'm a West Virginia-centric channel, I wanted to say, you know what, how can I tie this to West Virginia? Because we all know there are a lot of ties to Nick Saban in the state of West Virginia. But what a lot of people may not realize is the ties he has to West Virginia University and how West Virginia University actually played a hand in the dynasty Nick Saban built at Alabama. Many of you already probably know what I'm talking about. Many of you may not. Let me explain. And the reason I titled it You're Welcome, Bama fans, is because you guys should be thinking the state of West Virginia and even West Virginia University for the great Nick Saban and the run he had at Alabama. And fans of another team should be thanking him as well, which I'll get to in a minute. But fans of really across all of college football should be thanking the state of West Virginia. And the first reason is obvious. He was born here. Nick Saban, a native of the Fairmont, West Virginia area. We all know, though, he, even though he grew up there, he ended up not playing his college football at WVU. He ended up playing his college ball just across the border in Ohio at Kent State. He was a defensive back there. After his playing career ended, he served as a GA for Kent State for a couple of years before getting promoted and being a full-time assistant on the staff. I think he coached linebacker. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But he coached on the Kent State staff for a couple of years before moving up the ladder, getting a job at Syracuse. Then. In 1978, he comes back to home, back home to West Virginia, serves on the West Virginia staff under coach Frank Signetti in 1978 and 1979. Well, after the 79 season, Frank Signetti leaves West Virginia. West Virginia ushers in the Don Neelan era. The rest is history. Well, once Saban leaves West Virginia, he goes to other schools. He coaches at other schools. He has a couple stints in the NFL. Uh, one one that's pretty well known with the Browns alongside Bill Belichick. Those two goats coached together in, on the Browns, and they still sucked. That, that's a whole other discussion for a whole other day. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. Nick Saban, we all know he moves up the ranks. Never again does he coach at West Virginia. He was never an assistant again and was obviously never the head coach for the Mountaineers. We all know he finally got his first head coaching gig in 1990 with Michigan State. He did well there, so well that he ended up landing the job at LSU. Now, at LSU, he ends up leading them to a national title as head coach. On that staff at LSU was someone by the name of Jimbo Fisher, who was his offensive coordinator on that staff. Well, as most of you know, Jimbo Fisher also happens to be from what state? That's right, the great state of West, by God, Virginia. He lived in Clarksburg area. Matter of fact, I think he still has land in Clarksburg. I, I know his family still lives there. So Jimbo Fisher is also a West Virginia guy. They served on He served under Saban on that LSU staff. Therefore, Florida State fans, you can also thank West, the state of West Virginia for your national title that you won in, what was it, 2013, 2014, whatever year it was that Jimbo coached. You're welcome. Well, you're welcome. And, and by the way, let's not even talk about Bobby Bowden who leaves West Virginia for Florida State. He won national titles there. He also was a mentor for Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo followed him at Florida State and won a national title. 
My gosh, the West Virginia connections are almost endless here. But anyway, let's let's get back to the topic at hand. Saban, he leaves LSU to go to the Miami Dolphins. Well, he's at the Miami Dolphins a couple of years. Well, let's t- get, in your mind, let's go back to the 2006 college football season, right? Let's talk about West Virginia. Rich Rodriguez was at West Virginia. He had Pat White. He had Steve Sleck. He had Owen Schmidt. That team that was very, very good had just come off a shocking Orange Bowl win over, over Georgia and a Gator Bowl victory over Georgia Tech. Rich Rodriguez was the hot name in coaching. Rich Rodriguez, after the 2006 season, was offered the Alabama job, folks. Many of you know that. Many of you may not have known that. He was offered the Alabama job after the 2006 season. Well, he turned it down because West Virginia, according to him, according to Rodriguez, made some promises. They were going to increase his payroll for staff, yada, yada, some other things. So he come and also he knew what he had coming back. He had Pat White coming back. He had Steve Slayton coming back. He had a hot young star, Noel Devine, backing up Steve Slayton. He had Owen Schmidt still on the roster. He had a good defense coming back. He knew he, he knew this West Virginia team could probably compete for a national championship, which, oh, by the way, they should have. But that's a whole nother, whole nother topic. But he come what Rich Rod decides to come back to West Virginia for the 2007 season, which opens the door for Alabama to do what? They go and find the coach for the Miami Dolphins, Nick Saban, who really wasn't happy in the NFL, wanted to get back to the cottage game. Alabama job was open because Rich Rod didn't take it. He takes it. And here we are in 2024. Nick Saban's retired. He's led Alabama to six national titles. You're welcome, Alabama fans. Because if Rich Rod had taken that job, who knows what would have happened? Saban might have decided to stay at Miami and not leave the NFL. Or another college job may have opened up a year or two later, and he might have taken that job. And he could have led that team to national titles. Or who knows? Maybe he doesn't win any more national titles. And we're not talking about Nick Saban as the GOAT. So West Virginia University actually played a role in Nick Saban becoming the GOAT. And it's unfortunate that he never was the head coach at West Virginia because who knows what heights he could have led this program to over his career. As a West Virginia fan, it's hard not to think about that because we've never won a national title. We are the winningest program in history that has not won a national title. But we have produced a lot of good coaches from our state, including the one, the only, the GOAT, Nick Saban. So once again, Bama fans, Florida State fans, college football fans around the country who enjoyed watching Nick Saban's teams play every Saturday, I speak on behalf of the state of West Virginia, and we say, you're welcome. Guys, if you like this video, I ask that you do something for me. Please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down button. Tell me what I could do better. Also, if you haven't subscribed to Kuz's Corner, You don't have to be a West Virginia fan, folks. I cover conference alignment a lot on the channel. I do try to cover some Big 12 content, try to cover major news around college football when I can. If you like any of that, the subscribe button is what you need to hit. It could be red, it could be black, it could be white, depending on your device. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about West Virginia's role, the state of West Virginia, and also the the university and their role in helping Nick Saban get to where he's at or just the circumstances that they were involved in that led him to where he's at. Guys, if you want to support the channel, you can drop that comment, like, share, comment, subscribe. If you want to support me financially, guys, there's ways you can do that as well. First of all, you can become a VIP member, just like these folks that are scrolling along the bottom, Roy Harrison, Heath Stokes, Alice Stokes, and Matthew1981. Those are the VIP member shout-outs for this episode. As you can see, there are two levels. There, there is the pub level for $2.99 a month, which you will be part of the shout-outs and get the occasional early access to a video and access to contests I have on occasion. And you can be a club level member for $4.99 a month where you get a few extra perks like early access to videos, some early access with limited ads. There's a private Discord server where you can communicate with, with, with myself and the other club level members and a few other things as well. And when I do contests, you get extra entries. Speaking of contests, congratulations to Outlaw of College Football, who's a channel member here. He won the Bowl Mania Pick'em Contest that I had here for my channel members. 
and he was awarded a cash prize. I gave the winner the option of either getting a cash prize or two packs of Onnit NIL trading cards. He chose the cash prize, so congratulations to Outlaw of College Football. Thank you for your support here at the channel. And, oh, by the way, go check out his channel as well. He's actually an Alabama fan, so maybe one day I'll get him on the show to talk about Nick Saban's impact at Alabama and the and what the impact of him leaving will have on that university and, heck, even on the city of Tuscaloosa and the state of Alabama as a whole because it could be big. And last but not least, guys, another way you can support my show financially, support and also support your favorite college team, is on an NAL trading cards. West Virginia is available. There are several other teams. Alabama is available. If you're an Alabama fan watching this, Alabama cards are available. Support the NIL efforts of your favorite university by purchasing on an NIL trading cards. And if you use a link in my description box, I get a small commission from that sale. So click the link, buy yourself some NIL trading cards of your team. I'll get a small commission and the student athletes on the team that you purchase the cards for will get 60% of the profits. And it goes towards NIL. Name, image, and likeness. Pretty cool. And the cards are really nice. I have some of my own. And I'll just throw this out there. I do have a merch store if you want to go check it out. There's a link in the description. And last but not least, coozescorner.com. Go check it out. There are a lot of good blogs over there. You can get access to my videos. You can get access to my audio-only podcast. And it's a way for you to reach out to me. If you want to throw me a line, say hello, ask me a question, go to coozescorner.com. Click on contact us or reach out or whatever, whatever it says over there and shoot me an email. And I'll try my best to respond. With that being said, guys, I really appreciate you tuning in to this episode of Coos's Corner. I hope you all have a top shelf day. And until the next show, don't forget, it's vitally important that you cue country roads.